And we are back. We are live on YouTube with another Celebrity Apprentice recap. It is the very exciting Flying Delgado Brothers edition because, well, of course, you have me. I'm Dan. And as always with me is Joey, the Power Rankings guru. Say hello to everyone, Joey. Hello, everybody. Joey, how excited are you to talk about Celebrity Apprentice tonight on a scale of 7 to 38? Mm, I'm going to go somewhere around uh, upper 20s. Oh, okay. well, that's pretty exciting. I was hoping for like 38, but nah, all right. No, nope, no, nope. I liked it a lot, but uh, I could be, I could always be a little more excited. All right, all right. Well, also with us tonight is uh, the other part of this equation, completing the triangle, is uh, Eric is with us. Eric, say hello, everyone, tonight. How are you doing? 51, 51. Oh, see, now, that's the right answer right there. 51. Is, uh, Let's go! All right, all right. Now, what, maybe 51's a little too excited, actually. Yeah, you know? maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so this week on Celebrity Apprentice, <laughs> here's what we had. Here's what we had going in. We had three people left. We had uh, uh, Lisa Gibbons, Geraldo, and Vivica A. Fox. But before we got to that, we got this entire hour of filler where they're just showing us clips of what happened on uh, Celebrity Apprentice Past. I'm just curious if anybody watched any of that, if anyone has any opinions of any of that. I didn't watch any of it, uh, but it's on my DVR, and I didn't watch it, actually. All right, Eric, what about you? Yeah, I watched it, and uh, you will enjoy it, uh, Joey, because it's, you know, it's, it's like the Celebrity Apprentice Grace Hits. You know, um, they've got, I don't know, five or six different countdowns. Um, some of it might be a little um, prejudicial, you know, towards this season. It was like in each countdown, something from this season happened in each countdown. So oh. I thought, eh, I don't know if most memorable firing would have been, you know, the one that they chose. But well, uh, it was all right. They filled an hour. I'll tell you. Uh, I was surprised at how much I did enjoy it, even though I had seen pretty much all those cl those clips before. You know, watching Meatloaf melt down on Gary Busey again, I forgot just how intense right, the right. meltdown was. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, yes, they did go ahead and toss in a lot from this season. I'm okay with that because, quite honestly, the boardroom with PhoneGate is one of the most insane bizarre, amazing things that no, I've seen in my lifetime. No no doubt about it, man. You know, great, great. It actually didn't quite live up to the hype as we talked about uh, last week. Today. We had thought PhoneGate was going to be something that Trump or something that had been tweeted about Trump. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The, the way it looked, was it was just that there was a tweet coming out and that Trump seemed to be the person that was uh, hey, this is what's going on. What's this on Twitter? As though you know somebody out there had alerted him. Or maybe one time, well, he's checking his feed, and, oh, wait a minute, what's Vivica A. Fox tweeting about? What? I have a toupee. Well, that's not going to stand. It seemed like maybe something like that was going to happen by, by the end. But I'll tell you what, I'm not disappointed at all because not it was yet. so bizarre. There was uh, intentional sabotage. Everything about it was just so wonderfully weird and I, I don't know, there's something about the idea of, uh, of Don Jr. pulling out his phone and, yeah. and one, you know, letting everyone know. I have it right here. <laughs> so, what is bad that? news, Vivica. Bad news. Yeah, bad news, Vivica. <laughs> the main cause is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, let's move on. All right, so now we've got our three people left. We've got Geraldo, Lisa, and Vivica. And, and you know what's funny is that I think Everybody knows it's going to be Geraldo and Vivica. Uh, Eric, am I right about that? Is that what everybody knows? Yes. Oh, that's, yes I'm sorry. Geraldo and Vivica. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, right. It, it, I can't see a way that, that it's it, without another challenge. You know, if they're just doing it on merit, it, it had to be. Uh, oh, it had to be. Do you think if they did another challenge that Vivica was going to stand a chance against the other two if it was some sort of three-way challenge? If Vivica had w managed to do something spectacular, she needed to do more in order to be in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So without a challenge, there wasn't any way for that to happen. 
All right, so Joey, now I'm sure you're in agreement with us that it was clearly that Vivica was going to be going the way of the dinosaur. However, do you like this thing where it's all right, now it's an interview, and then what happens is Vivica just kind of politely bows out, look, these are the heavy hitters, I feel like I've done well for myself. You know, she takes the gracious exit. Joey, what do you think about this? I think that Vivica, well, okay, to answer your question, I think that, um, I wouldn't call that an interview. I think that was just a forced firing. Yeah, I you're think, right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I, she did make it easy, and Trump, it's, it's, it's really interesting because Trump went to her right away. So looking at it as if it's a firing, when he says, okay, why should you be fired or why should you stay or whatever, first of all, Trump immediately goes to Vivica. He doesn't go to anybody else first. She's the first one. And she's already showing some uh, some hesitation, some some reluctance, and you know she's not really powerful at that point, right? Then he goes to I'm not sure. I, I, then he goes to Geraldo, and he kind of asked him the same thing. He said, Geraldo, you know, tell me why you should stay or something like that. But I don't know if you guys caught this. When he went to Lisa, he didn't ask her that question at all. <laughs> he just asked her something about you know, the two of them or something like that, or who would you rather to, to compete against? He did not ask Lisa why she should, she should stay or to defend herself or if she should be fired, and I found that really interesting. Yeah, you know what? You're right about that. He, it, it was almost like, well, look, clearly you're going to be in the finals. However, among these other two crap holes that we have to put one of them in, uh, I guess it's, it, it had to be Geraldo. So really, I guess in a sense you could look at it as though Vivica saw the writing on the wall, and it's better to bow out graciously than to go down swinging. I don't know if, if it is, because I've, I've seen it so many times, you know. We saw it with uh, Lorenzo bowing out uh, a few weeks ago. We saw when yep. they did the interviews. I remember Lil John backing out. I think he did it both times he was on the show. He got down to, like, the final four, and then was just kind of like, yep, I'm just happy I made it this far, and I showed everybody that... I can do this, whatever this is, and uh, I'm happy with myself. Eric, what do you think about that, the whole bowing out? Is that, uh, is that gracious or is it just uh, easy? Well, you know, I think, you know, it's, it really has to do with the fact that these are the celebrities and why they're there. You know, it, it's all under the guise of, of competing, but in truth, they're there to raise their profile. They're there to increase their brand, um, they're there to, you know, get themselves out and, you know, whatever, whatever needs tweaking with their own uh, reputation, that, that's what they, that's really what they want to do, and it would be nice if you could do that and also kick ass at the end, but if you're somebody like Vivica or you're somebody like Lorenzo, you know this is as far as you're going to go, I mean, she knows she can't fundraise. Neither could Lorenzo. I mean, it, it comes down to the fundraising always. You know, that's the way you play Celebrity Apprentice. And I think that some of them even go in knowing, all right, you know, I hope I last four or five episodes. <clears throat> I get some good coverage and I don't come off as an a-hole or whatever. And in Vivica's case, you know, she <laughs> she towed the line on all of that. You know, she, she went up and down in, in every regard in the previous episode. You know, she lost her mind, you know, with that tweeting business. Yes. So I think, you know, as far as she was concerned, it was probably a savvy move because she's still going to be in the finale. She doesn't have the pressure of losing, and she looks like the sweetheart. So I think it's, it's good strategy. All right, all right. Uh, fair enough. Well, I, I do want to bring up one more thing about Vivica before we move on. And, yeah, you say that she, she doesn't have the fundraising, and I'm sure she doesn't have the same skills uh, or, or maybe connections that Geraldo and Lisa do. But, you know, she was in Independence Day. She's in Kill Bill. You know, she's been in movies with people. Did, did she not make friends on the set? She was yeah. in... She's in Batman and Robin for a few minutes hanging out with Schwarzenegger. Does that count for nothing? Yep, in the 90s. So what does that tell you? Why isn't she still killing it at 50? She's not Sandra Bullock. Even no. Sandra Bullock isn't Sandra Bullock. So what does it tell you? She, yes, yeah, she doesn't have lasting relationships. I mean, was uh, there, did she, she couldn't pull anything off. It's, it's not the first time. I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't go that far about the relationships thing. I'm, you know, just because she can't get her friends to throw in $20,000 doesn't mean that she doesn't have friends. She just doesn't have friends that are going to throw in $20,000 when, you know, when asked. Yeah, they don't have friends. 
does she have? Does she have a list? You know, big time fundraising celebrity friends or not? And and the chances are she does it because you know going into Celebrity Apprentice. Listen, I need. You don't go in and go, okay, how does this work? You don't arrive at Celebrity Friends and say, all right, so how do we do this? I you think some now, people do, Eric. <laughs> I think some people do. But you know who was like the, the greatest example of this? Was Ian, who I would say nobody expected to be a fundraiser because he's, he's a D-lister, and yeah. he comes in and he tells you that he has a war chest. Yep. Like, he's running for president. This guy got his act together before he ever showed up. And that's what I'm talking about. Now, not everybody's doing that, I agree. But that is the, that is the approach you're supposed to take. So that's if true. you're Vivica, she knows that. And if she wasn't able to do it, you know, there's a reason. I mean, it wasn't like she said, oh, geez, i got to start calling on my friends. She said, all right, what friends do I have? Okay, well, I'm not going the fundraising route when I go in there. I'm going to have to go the other route, you know, the Aunt Jemima route, which, you know, I won't even get into it. What the hell does that mean? Oh, All right. What the hell? I mean, what the hell is that? All right, everyone. Uh, 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 all right, address your emails to uh, to Eric via the Celebrity Apprentice podcast. I got no problem. With that I got no problem. With Eric at AOL dot com. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. AOL. AOL. <laughs> Sorry, plug my email address. I think I. Have uh, I have a net zero account somewhere that you guys can probably access. Yeah, you, you know what's hilarious? While we're laughing about this, I, I'm going to point something out. Both of you jokers yes. actually have AOL email accounts. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's right. Because you know, it's like the one thing I've managed to hold on to for the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because just like Vivek Ray Fox, you peaked in the 1990s. That's oh. right. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that goes for you too, Joey. I don't know what you're laughing at. It's for both of you. The crack was for both of you. Slam fest. All right. So All right. All right. Really, really, really quickly. Um, I'm Come sure, on. and I haven't been on the podcast before this, but I am sure the two of you, when you saw that Vivica Fox was going to be on this, you were thinking that you were going to get the Independence Day Vivica A. Fox, who was like, you know, young and savvy and cool, and instead she was like everybody's mother the way she talked on this show, acting like she was 70 instead of, which apparently she's 50. Um, she is probably a puzzle, so, you know, I mean, we got we to gotta give her a little bit of a break. What's that? Now, uh, listen, according to uh, to Don Jr., you know. This menopause is killing me. Right? Right? That's the problem with, Vinic with Vivica? This menopause is killing me. Acting a fool. That's right. She's acting a fool at fifty. All right, let's move on. We're moving on to the actual parts of the show here. So now Trump goes ahead and uh, gives Vivica. The, well, really, Vivica gives herself the boot. Trump has no choice. He fires her. So, all right. Now here's the uh, here's what the, the task is. It's a fundraising thing, as always. As a part fundraiser, and then the other part is going to be a presentation. It's for Universal Orlando, and you're gonna you're gonna need some help. This is so great. You're gonna need some help, and you know we've got some people. You know he makes it sound like who? Who could it be? You know it's the other fired losers who just got booted out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, what's, goon but what's really funny is that okay, basically Trump fired in a row. He fired um, Ian. He fired Johnny Damon. He fired Brandy, and then you know he fired Vivica, and it was probably five minutes later, even though right. for us it was a week later. Right. And Four of the six people that he brings back, because they're still probably in the building. All right, guess what? Yeah, right. right. Probably. Yeah. Well, they threw him on a plane. Yes, yeah. A big surprise that they all showed up in Orlando. Yes, exactly. Yes. And they now the, they were already on the plane going there. Oh, oh, you think so? Well, I'm sure they were all waiting. Yeah, exactly. Know? Maybe that's why Vivica quit. She wanted to get to Florida early. Yeah. <laughs> She she wanted to she wanted to ride the rides before the task, unlike Johnny Damon who wants to ride them during the during, task. We'll yes. talk about that later. All yeah. right. Now for Lisa, she gets uh, she gets Kevin Jonas, which is nice because all right, who did is was there anyone who didn't want to see Kevin Jonas? We all wanted that, right? Oh, we've been dying for that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
All right. So we get Kevin Jonas, and then we get Johnny Damon, and we get uh, Brandy Glanville because they're still hanging around. So here, you could get one strong player, and then these two guys that were just here. Which, which remember, it's going to come up later in the episode, but not too far down the line. Geraldo is jealous because he said, "Why couldn't I get Brandy?" <laughs> Oh, I don't. You know what? I'll tell you what. That escaped me. I don't think I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was. Did, he was did say he that, was, and he was bummed. Right. He was bummed because uh, he walks into the room there and he sees Ian and Lorenzo, and he says something like, "Oh no, two two guys I butted heads with. Is Trump playing a joke on me? How come I didn't get Brandy?" Well, yes. Well, you know what? That's exactly what I wanted to bring up. He bring, Trump puts Ian and Lorenzo on his side. Yes. Now, that's, they're both genius. Comedy. They're genius, both genius, Danny. Guys, but if you're Geraldo, you've got to be thinking these are two guys I don't get along with. Is Trump sabotaging me? That's exactly how he felt. Now, Eric, I'm going to put it to you. Is Trump doing that? Is the show, I should say, I don't know if the Trump is thinking of these things, is the show doing it intentionally to cause Geraldo some conflict because they know he's, you know, if you give him the right circumstances, he's just going to cause conflict? Yes, I think so. And if you, if you recall in the past, they didn't do it this way. They didn't just set you up, here's your team, here comes your team. They got them all together, and then they, they, they picked them or something like that. They didn't just... Talk, you know, you walk in the room and your team is there. This is this is a new approach, and I think that that's why they did it because in the past you're gonna work with people you want to work with. You're not gonna have to have the end. All right, so, so I think that's what they about it. There's absolutely no question about it. They did it on purpose, and knowing the kind of guy that Trump is, he was very involved in making sure, and maybe he even overruled somebody to make sure that the teams. You know, went that way. And if you are Ian uh, and Lorenzo, you know, this is proof that you're getting paid to be on the show because why the hell would they come back to be on Geraldo's team <laughs> unless they were getting a little, you know, a little of this stuff. You know yeah. what I'm saying there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. interesting. Have to do it. About it. Well, I mean, do you have oh. any, uh, any research on that? Uh, well, I, I, I have no idea who's getting paid what for Celebrity Apprentice. But I would say if you're Geraldo and if you're trying to put together a team for Geraldo, well, he got along with Vivica, he, uh, but he also got along really – the only person he really got along with was Sig. Sig. No one thought to bring Sig back. Did that go through anybody else's mind? Sig didn't want to come back. Oh, come on. Bring back Sig. Why not just what? the next year? Oh, <laughs> awful. He was beyond awful. The only thing he did that was memorable was that ridiculous meltdown on those two bartenders who I thought should have absolutely pummeled him when that happened. That was the only thing he did. No, he was one of the worst ever. Ever. No, uh, he's not one of the worst ever. No, 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 no. He's in the bottom half. But he, no, you got to start thinking. You gotta start thinking Latoya. You gotta start thinking Daryl. You gotta think Rodman. You gotta think uh, David Cassidy. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, no, 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 no. Whoa, 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 David Cassidy. You can't. What are you gonna, you gonna judge on that? That's there was well. nothing left of David Cassidy after that episode. <laughs> what was okay? What was left of David Cassidy? What was left of David Cassidy showed up at the reunion and became the pettiest human I've ever seen in my entire life when he confessed, when, when Trump asked him, are you happy that Richard Hatch is now in prison serving uh, his tax evasion? And David Cassidy said, yes, I'm so <laughs> good. He's in Good. Stay there. Stay he's there, not Richard. Here. He's not going to beat me up? Oh, good. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> oh, my God. David Cassidy. God. No one. No one who got fired in the first episode looked worse than David Cassidy. That, that's the all-time. That's the all-time worst. You know, when you think of like people that go on the show and get beaten up, their images are destroyed or t tattered or just really messed up. You got to start with him, and then you got to then you got to think about. I mean, you don't think too badly about you know Daryl Strawberry and, and Latoya because you sort of expect that that stuff out of them. But Dion Warwick was a mess. Uh, Cheryl Teagues. They must have like dug her out of the grave or something because she barely blinked, right? Uh, right? I mean, this is, when you're talking all-time worst, 
Those are the people that went in that had that had some sort of a semblance of a brand that was respectable, and then it was just like, are you kidding? That's you, you know. So that's all, the, when you talk about all time worsts, that that's the list. It starts with those three. All right. Okay, what I'm talking about, I get you there. Maybe maybe what you're saying would be more like worst celebrities. Uh, I'm talking about as far as player, as far as contributing on this show. All he did. I, I, I think it's the same thing. I think it's like, like until it was his turn and he was awful. That's what I'm saying. And I, I you know, I, I think it's the same thing, Eric. I think it's the same thing because each each of those players that I'm talking about lasted less than three episodes, right? But all right. Wait, no. Back to my original point about Sig, though, is that Sig got a Daryl was in the, one of the teams miraculously, even though he made right. it, that you don't uh, people don't understand celebrities, and now they have to get up at noon. They, regular people don't understand that. All right. Well, now the, the point that I was trying to make with Sig was that Geraldo and Sig got along well. So don't you think if you're Geraldo, you'd want a guy that you could work with well and who would probably do what you say? What did he do? What did he ever do? He comes what would you have him do? No, I think that Geraldo would actually bring I would have brought Lorenzo. If he knows it's a filmmaking task or something like that, he probably would pick Lorenzo. I think that he, I think that he would. I mean, I would think he would feel like he's going to manipulate him. Sure not. Eric broadcasting from uh, from an unknown shelter somewhere. He's a prisoner of war by ISIS. <laughs> Apologize, folks, for the feed and and this single light bulb. <laughs> yeah, well, you know his his your audio what your audio went a little crazy there. Yeah, Eric's in the middle of a he, he's doing this in between interrogations apparently is what. Uh, <laughs> that's your, that's where we get our guests from. Prisoners of war. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm doing this people. We're gonna have to work on this one. We're gonna need some close captioning for Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's all that different, really. You know, uh, I've heard him in real, with, just in real life, he could use some close captioning. Okay, uh, Eric. By the way, when you want to, when you want to show your uh, lower third, you have to be talking, or, or people won't be able to see it. Just a quick FYI. <laughs> I thought so. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. That's hard. Okay. All right, I don't even know what's going on, but let's get back on track here, people. Let's get back to the task at hand, can we? Everyone. Danny, I'll, I'll, t I'll take you right to the next part. That's oh. when, that's when um, Geraldo and um, and Ian sort of make up. And they, you know, so, you know, Ian says, you know, it was never personal, blah, blah, blah. But, and, and actually, Geraldo goes to shake his hand. Geraldo says, okay, let's reset. And did you guys catch that weird handshake that Geraldo tried? Yeah, he, Geraldo used a thumb like he was going to use the reset button, like they were going to touch thumbs or something, and it was awkward. Yeah, it was weird. Handshake. And yeah. so Geraldo was like, oh, okay, and it, and made it awkward. And then he called him a doll. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it, it was uh, something like this. My grudge was because I felt you were the strongest competitor. Yeah, well, yeah, you're, you're a doll. Thank you. <laughs> he, just, like, he, didn't, he barely said the words. They just kind of fell out of his mouth. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to I, listen to that about four or five times. I thought maybe he said, yeah, 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 you're a real adult. And then I thought I thought he said, yeah, 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 you're real dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Now it's just in case anyone, anyone's not clear on it. We now know. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're a dog. <laughs> you're a dog. Hey, you remember the, the look on Ian's face? It was kind of like, did you just say that? Yeah, like yes. He was. He he gave his Ian offended look. You know. Yeah. I can't believe how often you get that look. You get yeah. that look all the time. Yes, you get that look all the time. Nine zero two one zero look. I didn't realize he just carried that into real life. Well, what you didn't realize was that he's actually Steve Sanders. Is I, I think the problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's who was his boss at the? Who was his boss at the? Uh, what was it called? The Peach Pit. Oh God, Nat was his boss at the Peach Pit. Yeah. yeah so probably Nat got that look a lot. <laughs> Stop. Stop. 
All right, because now, now I got a flashback to the first episode where they're making the pies, and we get the the, the confet where he actually says, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm run back yes. working at the peach pit, and he starts talking about the peach pit like it was an actual job that he held, that it wasn't a yes. part of a TV show. What the F, Ian? Ten years, man. Maybe he thought it was real. You never know, man. I mean, he started out, he was just a baby. You know, I would I would hate to think that, that, Steve, that Steve Sanders worked at the Peach Pit for 10 freaking years. That's, uh, hopefully he quit at some point. He barely worked there at all. It was, it was Brandon that worked there. Yeah, yes. you know what, you were correct. All right, all right, so. Uh, even, though, even though he did work there. Now, I, all right, I do want to point out that this scene also features my other favorite moment here that I, I got to play this for you, and this is where Geraldo says, like, I've got an idea, but I want to hear what everybody else thinks, so if you have any broad ideas, you can just let me know. And Lorenzo starts to speak, and this is what we get. So you have reluctant parents on this trip and excited kids. I appreciate the family thing. But how about this? How about Geraldo is the investigative <laughs> Hey, How about Geraldo? <laughs> you know what? I've got this idea. It's it's family. It's kids, and we're doing something together. And the the kids are frustrated, but now we're gonna go together. No, wait a second. That's great, but but I'm gonna I'm gonna let you finish, Lorenzo. But but wait a minute. How about Geraldo? Is the investigative reporter? Are you what? Jesus Man. Christ. He uh, is in his own ego. He really is swimming in it. I, I had no idea. You know, I knew that we all, I think everybody knew Geraldo Rivera is an arrogant guy. I think we all knew that, but I don't think we had any idea of the level that it is right now, which is way above like my ceiling. He's just like floating in the air somewhere, correct? His yeah. arrogance is definitely out of control. There's no question about it. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really surprise me that selfie stuff from a little while ago. You know that 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 was very telling that he's wait whoa 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 he's the father of the selfie all right come on now he invented it <laughs> that's right he, I Let me see you the box. oh my god he, you know who's doing that you know I mean, for the world he yeah he's just he's just who I he is want to point something out I want to point something out in defense of Geraldo as arrogant as he is did you guys catch who his charity is. Yes, it's the uh, Children of Willowbrook. Yep. That's amazing. And he, he didn't just start doing that. He's been doing that for 25 years. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think it was the first time we heard. I was surprised to hear it last night, too. I said, how come I didn't know that already? You are correct, because I don't remember hearing it either. And when he said it, it totally stuck. You know, it's funny. All three of us knew exactly what the charity was. However... None of us knew it before last night, and how is that the case? Because when he said it, it stood out, and I said to Je I started talking about the whole Willowbrook thing with Jessica at uh, with my wife Jessica at that moment. Like, oh, that's for you know, blah 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 blah. Yeah. Well, you know, there are two possibilities here. One is we'd have to go back and watch, but one is that a he didn't say Willowbrook when he mentioned the charity before. He could have just said life's work. It could have been that, or b he could come in and have a couple different charities that he's trying to raise money for, which like any any celebrity could have could be involved in a couple different uh, charities. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know. He could he could pick. Uh, they don't make them uh, assigned to to one charity. But I can tell you this: in the first episode when I was watching it, and he was immediately an arrogant prick. I said to Renee, I said, "Here's the thing: I know that he's going to be this guy." But for me, he's going to get a pass just because of Willowbrook. He's always going to get a pass. Now, of course, now after seeing every, you know, the way he's been for the episodes, you know, I don't know about how much I feel about the pass, but that was what I said at the very beginning. So I'm sure that I would have known at that point if that was a charity he was playing for. So, okay. Eric, I want to make sure I understand you, Eric. Broadcasting live from Gitmo. Yeah. Um, are you saying put the pass in the past? Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> okay, okay, listen, 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 everybody, stop it with your, stop, stop talking, everyone stop talking, all right, I can, I cannot stand all this terrible audio.
Eric is saying that Geraldo gets a pass. I know. As we li- we get, we're giving him a pass. He's the only one who is confused. He gets a pass because of things that he did in the past. Eric, let me ask you a question. I brought this up to uh, to Joey, I think, in our last show or, or maybe a show or two before. Now, are you aware that Geraldo has someone from Willowbrook who lives with him? That he, One of the people that, were, that was in the hospital when he did the story. What, what does your dumb sign say? You have to say something for it to be on the camera. I'm saying something right now. I'm saying I am aware of the person that lives with Geraldo. Okay. I, yeah, all right. Good. I'm glad. So for, for a while, I was thinking that maybe I was imagining that. But uh, Eric has. Uh, he put his little sign down. Okay. His little Geraldo. You voted for Geraldo in '88, did you? Well, uh, look, I'm voting for him uh, in, in 2016. That's uh, uh, right there. It's uh, right there on the sign. I'm, that's what I'm doing. Okay. So nice. let's move on to what we have in the task. All right. So on Geraldo's side, he has decided that he's going to be Harry Potter and he's going to do this investigative reporting about uh, finding magic at Universal, whatever the hell it is. He's going to have some kids. It's going to be wonderful. It's actually, even though he chimed in and stepped all over her, uh, Lorenzo, which maybe was a bad edit, but maybe, I, I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's just that's just how hilarious Geraldo is. I, I don't think that's necessarily uh, a bad idea. Actually, I thought that it's, it's, it's actually not pretty good, pretty good. Uh, Joey, what'd you think of Geraldo's idea as it was coming together? I thought, <clears throat> I thought it was a, the kind of idea that Trump would appreciate, right? Because like in the past, Trump has been critical of of the stars that didn't use the 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 thing that made them famous, you know. So I thought, while it definitely sounded arrogant, especially in the way he it pitched it, if you will, if you want to call that a pitch, I thought it was probably it could potentially be a winner. Okay. Eric, uh, same question to you. What did you think of Geraldo's idea? It's, we're going to have kids, finding the magic. At one point, Geraldo will be dressed as Harry Potter with uh, his big giant mustache, which I can't wait for. Or, what do you think, Eric? Uh, I thought it was conveniently very good. I thought that, um, you know, the way it is with Geraldo, he would have found a way to make himself the star of the thing, even if it was bad. So I think that he worked out and it's a little bit clever this time because he's done this before. Where he's thrown out a bunch of crap and it was all centering on himself. He was uh, dressed up as um, that um, the viral video that Lorenzo it wasn't Mr. Peanut. It was oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Eric, uh, Eric is broadcasting <laughs> underwater apparently. <laughs> Gibbo has taken on water. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? Uh, it was it was very difficult. It was very you know sometimes you you come in really good and sometimes it's not that good. So I'm sorry. Um, all right. So anyway, let's let's move on. On the other side, Lisa's doing the whole thing about a family going and honestly, now we all love Lisa and she's been the classiest of class acts on Celebrity Apprentice. I do think that that so far, just the idea that she has about families, it seems awfully safe, and it seems like just the the easiest thing that you could do is some frustrated family going to have a good time uh, over at Universal. Uh, Joey, what did you think of Lisa's idea? (laughs) This is the part where you're supposed to talk, Joey, not laugh. If you could do some talking. (laughs) I agree with you that it did seem safe, but the thing is that if Lisa's involved, it's gonna it's gonna be okay. So I I sort of tend to um, I think generally speaking with any of the ideas, I usually I usually withhold judgment. So you know that's kind of what I was thinking. And by the way, Geraldo's my guy. I see, and it's it's busted nose Geraldo is your icon. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, all right. Listen, Bushmouth, you're gonna have to hold on for a second. We'll get to you. <laughs> oh, we just. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Can't, can't you get so? <laughs> can't you get somebody in the next cell over to help you with your, your connection? <laughs> I don't have to do with this, but it, it is. <sighs> The thing is, this is probably. I wonder. I'm thinking maybe this is just only funny to us, but it is awfully funny. All right. So now <laughs> both groups are gonna go out into the world and try to do their task. 
on Lisa's side. She's, we've got Kevin Jonas, and Kevin Jonas is making things happen. All right, uh, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and she just and Lisa's just kind of let go. And I totally think that that's a, a solid idea. Let go, let Kevin Jonas pick up the banner and run with it. And you know, so the two of them are working, and Brandy and Johnny, who are significantly more useless. All right, you get the, the task of going. You get the prop task, which is the task that we give to the useless people. So go find Always. some props. And actually, really, you know what though? It's before then. They're walking around and they're filming stuff. And it's supposed to be the four of them. And Kevin and Lisa notice that Brandy and Johnny aren't around. And where are they? Well, you see them getting a beer and hot dogs. And uh, we have Johnny Damon letting us know great things like... You know the best way to make hot dogs? Oh! <laughs> that's how You're you... focused on the task. Yes, that's it right there. That's it right there. By the way, I th we're man, man down. Man, we're man, we're a man down. I, I think I think Eric's time is up in Gitmo. <laughs> I think they got him. <laughs> hey, well, you know he's got to go back in for the next the next round of interrogations. <laughs> the waterboarding is beginning. All right. So anyway, back to the task at hand here, Joey. Yeah. Were you surprised at how um, ineffective Brandy and Johnny Damon were? I really was. I mean, they both, as we as we noted before, both of those contestants had come on really strong in uh, <laughs> in recent weeks. Okay, I know what you're doing. Stop changing your icon every time. What are you talking about? <laughs> My God, I don't know what you're talking about? Um, they had both competed well, and uh, they'd done a great job, and they looked like they were getting the hang of it, right? Like. Johnny was coming out of his shell a little bit. We talked about that. And in the power rankings, both of those players were, were performing well. And it was reflected in the rankings, right? So I, I just – I was really disappointed that they know the deal. They know how it works. And now they get to come back and they get to help. And there's really almost no pressure on them, right? Because they're not going to go to the board to get fired. Right. So you're comfortable. You you like Lisa. Um, you know, you're probably getting paid uh, some money to come back and do this thing. and I just, I don't know. They just uh, wanted to talk about doing hot, uh, making hot dogs the best way, of course. But, and, that's, um, right. You're only, if you're only, if you're gonna make hot dogs, you, you might as well do it the best way. You know the best well, way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, do, do that. Hit that again, Danny. <laughs> of course, he would know this because he played in baseball park. So I would, would be my guess. You know the best way to make hot dogs. <laughs> He's probably eating a lot of dogs in his day. I would have uh, so. Um, yeah. all right, here's what is so funny to me is that when this happens, I said, wouldn't it be really funny if instead of getting hot dogs and beer, they just cut to a shot of the two of them on a roller coaster? And holy Boom. crap, just wait 10 minutes because after being tasked with going to get props, which by the way, really for them, it was go to the, like, the Universal store and buy whatever the hell stuff you can find. Instead, they actually decided, hey, let's forget shopping and just go <laughs> just ride roller coasters. Holy I God. can't believe they actually said that. They actually said that. They said, why don't we go on a roller coaster and say we were shopping the whole time? <laughs> you know, you, you should know that cameras are there. If you're going to do that, you should just like, all right, look, this is a, look we both know what we're doing here. We're both effing off. We're both going to goof off and not do the task at hand, and who gives a crap about it? Because, come on, uh, we're at Universal. Let's have a good time. But, no, like, to actually say it, like, now we all know you're shirking. Look, you're shirking your responsibilities. It's ridiculous. It was, it's, I, I, but you know what? Let me ask you this, man, because yeah. the way that they were riding the roller coaster, they get on that Rip Rocket roller coaster, which, by the way, I'm terrified of roller coasters. I would never get on that thing. I don't advocate it. Made me think of you instantly. Yes, absolutely. Would never. Get, I've seen that one close up. No way I'm getting on it. Yeah. Uh, okay. It sure did look like, and the way they had the cameras on them, it looked like, hey, this is an ad for Universal. Do you think that maybe that there's some the little uh, shenanigans in there and the two of them getting on the, the roller coaster? Little well, little publicity going on there from uh, Universal? What do you mean shenanigans? How would it be shenanigans? 
Like, you know, or hey, you know, you know, it'll be great for you. Let's just have a thing where you guys just get on the roller coaster and ride it, and then we're going to film it. We'll put it in the show, and it'll be like crazy. Like, look at this crazy thing that they're doing, but it's also going to totally show off the roller coaster like it did. Like, there was great shots of them going up, but what really got me is that there was this fantastic shot of them, like, coming down on the roller coaster. They were like, they had this oh, I see. Shot of the two of them, and then we also got the shot of the two of them while they were on the roller, you know, like the video shot of them on the roller coaster. We got to see the picture that you get while you're that you that they take of you while you're on the roller coaster. It was like an ad for that roller coaster, was it not? Okay, that's one way to look at it, and you could very well be correct. But I would I would throw out the fact that sometimes it's just about getting the best shot, and I'm not sure if this if this if this is going to explain away everything you're talking about. It probably isn't, but. In, in that scenario, in terms of uh, shooting something technically speaking, they're already set up for it, right? Because they have the cameras, you know, th that are right there at that moment. So probably what happens is they built this thing to be able to shoot, you know, still pictures. They they were like, okay, great, then we'll get our 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 big time motion cameras in there. And so maybe it was just coincidence. Maybe not, but I think that's why you can get that shot. The you know, you know, you can get that shot that way. It's laid out that way. You know, do you, does that make sense? No, no, no it, it totally makes sense. And I always want to believe in what I'm seeing. But here's one thing yeah. that, uh, that 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 stood out is that when they got on the roller coaster, the two of them were in the front, and then the next three or four seats were empty, and then there was like two to three people in the back. Right. I thought that was really uh, interesting too. So why would that? Why would they want to do that though? Like. Um, are they afraid that like someone's gonna puke on them, or that they're gonna puke on somebody? Or I, it, I maybe, saw that too. I don't know. Maybe because uh, you know somebody's behind them, they know where they're gonna be on camera. Somebody might toss up a middle finger or something, or or, yeah. or might, someone might try to interfere with right. what's going on. Someone's gonna punch Johnny Damon in the face. You know. That's a very good theory. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. All right. So anyway, so so things seem to have been. I don't know little bit of problem going on with Lee's aside because he's not getting as much help. It doesn't seem to be the worst thing in the world. But now, one, one, one thing I want to interject about that, Danny, please. is that Kevin Jonas actually made a terrific point. You know, he's as smart now as he was when he was on the show before he got fired. And he makes this great point because they're worried about competing. Because remember, you have to, there's two levels that you're going to be judged on. It's the fundraising and it's also – the creative part of building the, the, the ad, right? Yes. And Kevin Jonas points out that, so they're worried about whether or not they can match Geraldo's um, prowess at, at raising funds, which I'm still a little bit dubious of, and maybe I'm very wrong about that. I kind of wonder if Geraldo really can raise all that money, but they think that he's going to raise three or four, three or 400,000, they, they said at one point. And uh -huh. so they're worried about that. Lisa's, Lisa gets uh, a, one person, one company to throw in 50000 I think. Yes, and yes. wasn't there another big check, Danny, like really big? Yeah, there was one for, I want to say, $125,000 that she I got. I think it was one twenty. I think it was yeah. one twenty. but yeah. So she all... already has one seventy coming in out of the gate, but she's still worried. She still doesn't think that she could match um, Geraldo. So then, anyways, then you cut to the Jonas confessional. And he says that it's you know that they since they probably can't beat Geraldo, like he's willing to concede the amazing thing. But he also points out that Geraldo's ideas stink, that they're dated, they're you know, from the seventies. You might see a picture every now and then of Geraldo from the seventies, as if he's still stuck in there. And that that's what they have to focus on. So I thought that was a very strong point and um, it makes you think that Lisa probably is gonna win because her thing her final product will probably just be better than Geraldo's. It probably will. And there won't be drama either. Right. You know what? It, it, even though I, I think that her theme is is uh, playing it safe, if you will, yeah. is, is yeah. a very easy thing to, to go to, it probably will be better than Geraldo's because, I don't know, Geraldo just has a, a way of, of screwing things up like this. And as we yep. saw... So they're they're getting their stuff together. We've got Lorenzo. Uh, he's going to direct, and they're doing one of their first shots. It's going to be in front of the big giant uh, Universal Globe. And where? Wait, wait a second. Where are the kids? The kids? There's supposed to be kids in this shot. Oops. Where are the kids? I thought you had the kids. No, no. Wait, did it, did you send the production assistant to get the kids? No, wait. No, I'm Geraldo. 
I thought you were – didn't you say you were doing it? And so the kids are not there. They're back at the war room, which if you've been to Universal, it's huge. And getting from point A to point B takes forever. So wherever this war room is, I'm sure it is not close. I'm sure it is a hike to get to it since they're standing right at – basically they're standing at the opening gate, right in the front gate of Universal Studios if you've ever been there. you see seen the Big Globe. You know what I'm talking about. So they're walking away, and, and they're walking like um, – from the front of Universal Studios, and they're walking towards Islands of Adventure. So they're walking that big, long way in front of Hard Rock Live, in front of uh, where the NBA uh, store is over there as well. And it's like, oh my god, like they're really far because they're not even going back into Universal. They're going over towards the other park to find wherever the hell this war room is. And it's at that point that Geraldo, and this is where our our ending is, is that Geraldo. Frustrated, it seems like it might be his fault that the kids aren't there because they all thought he he was uh, sending someone to get them. He says, to, to, that's it. I'm taking over this task. I'm directing everything from now on. I'm Geraldo, damn it. Joey. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. Just before that happened, Lorenzo mm-hmm. got Geraldo to admit that it was Geraldo's fault because he assumed that – that someone was taking care of that detail. Geraldo actually admitted that. Like, and then it was, I think it was because he was forced to admit it, because he, like, he, he paused a little bit while he was walking and he was thinking about it. And his, Lorenzo actually said to him, did, did you, so you, you just assumed, didn't you, that yes. this was being handled? And Geraldo thought about it and he goes, yeah, I assumed. And then it's right after that he goes, you know what, from now on, I'm in charge of every shot. Right? I mean, I think that it was partially because – he, you know, he was forced to admit his mistake, and of course now he's mad. And on top of that, he sees justification to take this over because he can't assume in his mind that anybody is going to do the job the way he thinks it ought to be done, right? Like, uh-huh. like, the, I like, like the thing that he had to admit is that he assumed. And so Lorenzo is trying to say, listen, well, maybe you shouldn't assume, and maybe you should just be a little bit more detailed about that, just to make sure that that's being handled. Instead of just playing the you know the blame game later, that's what Lorenzo's trying to do. But the way Geraldo hears it is, you know what? You're right. I did screw that up. I I shouldn't assume because you guys all suck, <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess that is the way to, to, right? to which is so funny because you would think like the way that should play out with rational human beings is. Yeah, you know what? You're right. I assumed I was wrong. All right, look, I'm, you know what? I'm going to rely I, – I need to rely on you guys more often, and, uh, you know, we're a team. We work as a team, and this is the best way to get things done instead of, oh, my God, I did assume. You know why? It's because I work with morons. It has to be me. <laughs> I have to do yes. everything. I can't assume you're going to do anything. How did you even tie your shoes today? Right, uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Oh. So true. So true. So now I thought now the way the show ended, it just seemed to end, right? Like um, I guess the, that was supposed to be our cliffhanger, is, is what I'm thinking. Well, okay, on uh, my DVR, and then I watched it, you know, on another source. It ended the same way. It ended suddenly, and yep. I didn't see a preview for the next episode. Did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Oh, oh okay. The live finale. Blah blah blah. Trump talking about how wonderful it is and shots. Okay. Of- uh, wherever, Radio City Music Hall, wherever the hell it is that they have that thing that people show up for and streamers falling from the sky, all that stuff. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. okay. All right. Well, now now, when is that finale set for? That is set for next Monday, my friend. Next Monday night is the greatest night in the history of television, and no one out there should miss this particular event that's going to change all of our lives. Uh, Joey, before we leave, here's what I want to get out of you. I want a guess as to how much Geraldo will raise. Oh, that's good. Uh-huh. Well, I would, I, like I told you before, I, was, I entered tonight's episode being dubious of his ability to raise money. But at one point, remember when they were trying to sell those um, packages for $25,000 each? Yes. And, you know, I am, you know, basically said, hey, you know, I don't think you can count on me. <laughs> I don't know if you, I don't know if you can hold my feet to the fire here on this. Um, but he said, look, we're trying to sell ten of these things. You know, if each of you can sell one, I'll take the other seven. So now I'm starting to think maybe I was wrong. 
at that when I heard that maybe he can raise more money than I think he can. Um, I don't know how many times you can go back and keep tapping into the same Fox guys because that's what I see. I think that's why I'm, I'm not that impressed because it's the same old Fox guys. It's Hannity. He brought up O'Reilly. You yep. know, I don't view him as having this multitude of people from his career. You know, he's not. At least they're not showing all of these great you know, war generals that he may have interviewed that are retired, you know, Oliver North or, you know, I don't know, people that may or may not have a lot of money. We're just seeing the, the, the people that he works with now, right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. All right, so listen, listen, quit shirking the, the issue here. I need a number out of you, for goodness sake. I ask you for a number, you talk for five minutes. Good Lord, it's like, it's like we got Rod Blagojevich back on uh, Celebrity Apprentice. Come on, just give me a number, damn it. Stop politicking. All right, let's see. Well, I'm going to go with uh -huh. 375,000 dollars. Okay, Joey weighs money, in. Money, 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 money. Money. All right, I am going to go I'm going lower than that. I am going to take um uh I was thinking it was going to be like 265 is what he was going to come up with. I was thinking somewhere in the twos uh, would be it. Because, you know, the, the big week that he had with Iron wasn't that in the twos. It was like 292 to 294, I believe. Or 294 and a half. 294 uh, and uh, $500. I think that's that's where I'm going on that. All right. Anyway, let's let's get the hell out of here. We've talked enough. We've lost a man in the marathon of the Celebrity Apprentice recap. We are man down. Time to regroup. Good lord. All right. So we'll be back again. Uh, going over the finale. I don't know. Maybe we'll. Are we gonna have a power ranking show this week, Joey? Of course, we have to. Right. I mean, uh, we have what probably eight people. <laughs> whose fortunes may rise or fall? Oh my God, Johnny David has to fall. He's got to fall. Don't he, don't don't say anything. All I'm saying is that uh, Johnny David has got to fall. You know the best way to make hot dogs? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh my goodness, that is just like the best thing ever. All right, all right. So uh, we will be doing a power ranking show this week. Then after that, we'll be back again for the finale. With that, uh, say good night to everybody, Joey. Wait, wait, wait! Before we do that, you did, did you actually uh, give us? Oh, you did. What was your number for Geraldo? Two hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. Okay. Yes. That's okay. Right. All right. Well, listen, audience, it's been a thrill as always. But you know what? You're fired. <laughs>